okay, let's take this SAMD21 Mangler and move it into Fusion so we can work on the 3D printed components. Click the Fusion Sync. We're going to create a new Fusion design. Next. Go OK. There's no 3D packages for anything, but that's OK. I'm just going to push it. I don't want the parts specifically. I want the board layout because I'm wanting to grab this section here accurately so I can build a 3D printed piece that fits inside there. OK, so it's pushing it through, which is great. Been successfully pushed. I can close that now. If I go into Fusion, go to my file list, go to my first project, which is just a, a group all that they make at the start. OK, we've got our SAMD21 Mangler in Fusion. Double click it. And there it is. So as you can see, the components that have come through just as bounding boxes because it didn't have 3D representations for them. But it uses the inbuilt dimensions as best it can to place an approximation. So we're going to create a new sketch. We're going to use the front of this as our sketch object. So we want to trace out these rectangles. You'll see that when placing a rectangle, the definition that they've got in here doesn't exactly line up with the image. I don't want to use the exact dimensions that are here because the image is just a, a low res bitmap, as you can see. So it's got some aliasing and dithering and stuff. So it's not quite the same because it's going to make the tolerance too tight. So I want to bring it just in a fraction. I'm not quite sure how much. So I could just do a bit of zooming in and out. I don't want it to be something like that. I'm not really sure how that approximates to the exact dimensions. But definitely something like this. So then what, what I want to do is grab that and copy it and paste it. I want to keep the same dimensions. I'm just going to move it down. See if I can get it in the right spot. That'll do. And I want to do that again. I'm going to move it over this way. I think that looks fairly good. Okay, now I just need to put a circle in. So hit C for circle. Now, is there a center point here? No, there's not. Is there a center point here? There is, because it'll automatically snap to the center if it can find it. I want my center point, and I'm going to drag across without clicking. And that keeps me in the center. And I'm going to just eyeball for now. And once again, I don't want it to go all the way. I need it to be a fraction smaller. So let's zoom in so it doesn't snap as easily. OK, because the printer is going to have different tolerances. OK, what's next? Next, we need to put down an overall rectangle. So I'm going to follow the, the white lines for now, roughly, as approximately as I can. OK, so we've now got an overall structure that will hold everything together, which we'll be extruding. Now in the center of that is where I want to place my rectangles that I'm going to extrude that's going to actually hold the chip. I'm not sure how high they need to be yet, but I do know that from the bridge of the pins where it goes into the package from side to side is about 8.2 millimeters. So I'm going to make it 8.5 by 8.5. That's the piece that's going to hold the pins down. So that's going to be its lowest point onto the board and now we need to cater for the the package height which is how high the actual IC is in total and the only way to really know that is to measure one so I have done that it's approximately 1.1 millimeters so from here outward we're going to have the bit that sticks down and from here inwards we need to lift so let's stop the sketch this could be everything we need right now let's go back into 3d view it's going to create a new component Right click and go new component. Let's give it a name it's called holder. Okay, and we're going to need to do extruding. So the first thing we want to do is grab the feet. We're going to extrude these backwards. The board thickness is 1.6. We want to have a little bit of overhang. So let's take it down. So 2 mil. So that's what's going to sit into the board. Let's turn our sketch object back on. Turns it off whenever you use it. Now we need this is the lowest point, remember? This is what we want touching the pins. So we'll actually grab everything and pull it all out for the moment. We'll make this about, we don't want it too thick, but we don't want it too thin. We'll go two millimeters. Actually, just to make it strong, we'll pull these up as well. Like those two millimeters as well. So we get a flat top, better for printing. Now we want to take this center section now, and we're going to extrude that as well. We're going to dig in. So this will cut away and we want this to be, so we said it was 1.1, so we'll make it 1.5 mil. We don't need to push the chip down, we just need to really hold the pins in place. Now the only other thing we might want to do, because the actual pins don't go all the way to the edge of the package, is we could lift some of this out around here, but for the moment I don't think we will. For now I just want to see if I can put a chip inside that 
and place it on a board and see if it actually lines up correctly. Now I guess the biggest concern is we might not be able to see whether the pins line up because this outside edge might be covering the pins. So I might actually grab some of these faces and move them back just a fraction, just a mil. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. Oh, that's going to leave us with edges that don't fit. Okay, I'll try that again. Maybe we'll move it back just a half a mil. Just don't know how strong this will be. We might have to reinforce the side. Half a mil. We might actually only need two corners to do this. Because if two lengths are lined up, then we would assume all four would be lined up. I'll do all four just for now. I can always adjust it later. Okay, so this might give us enough room to see the pins, but it may not. The pins aren't super long. We should just see the edge of the pins and the pads. Let's give this a print and see what happens. Okay, I did a lot of going back and forwards, redesigning and tweaking. I'm not going to bore you all with it, but this is my final design. So a few changes. Obviously, I've got a, got a much thicker leg for the circular hole, just so I can identify it when I'm holding it in my hand because it's quite small. Even though these are square and these are round, they look fairly close to each other when it's tiny. I also added some space on the top to see through because sometimes the Sandy 21 chip can get not stuck inside, like it's not going to be damaged in any way, but it just, you know, it's a very nice tight fit to keep the chip in place. And so sometimes I have to prod it out with some tweezers from the other side. And I've also made the general body thinner so I can actually see more of the pins on the sides to uh, see whether it's in alignment or not. It's still not perfect, but I can't get it any narrower because if I get it any narrower, there'll be no stability on it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Let's uh, print it out. So as you can see, I might have um, gone through quite a few different revisions of these little holders. A couple of reasons. Um, obviously my first prototypes were quite plain, they were never going to hold the chip in place. And then these other ones didn't allow me to see past the sides easily, to see whether the actual chip itself was on the board cleanly. And then some of these other ones were just not strong enough. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a the piece that's fallen off on one of them. Whoop. I was also getting some stringing on my printer. It's such a small little piece that I was printing with a lot of movement. You can see right here the stringing on this piece possibly. Let me just turn it over. You can possibly see the stringing there. So I had to slow the, the wipe movement down for the retraction and also drop the temperature of the PLA slightly. And I've been getting good prints out of it since then. So this is the final design as you would have seen. It's, uh, it's pretty small. But it works quite well. Here's the board, <laughs> which is also quite small, as is the Sam D21. So the way it works is grab our chip. Okay, so here's our chip. You can see pin zero, maybe just there. So pin zero goes obviously on the circle area. So we flip it over, pin zero in spot. It just sits in there quite nicely. Not too hard to get in. It does move around a little bit, but it does sit still. I've just been grabbing the board and placing the board on. Like this. Here we go. Flip it over and we've got the holder holding the chip in place. You're not really going to be able to see but the pin alignment, you can see a bit of a gap there. So you can actually see the pin alignment and the feet actually line up really well. And that's that's in place and of course if I flip it over and I shake it around it may fall out. As I said I didn't want to actually clip it into place. But it's on the board and it's working, it's holding it in place. Here's a close up of the board with the chip sitting in place. So what I need to do now is make one of these boards. Now of course this particular revision of the board has the issue where I flipped the header for the ice the wrong way around. It thinks it's supposed to be on the bottom. So I'm going to have to actually put the header on the bottom or I'm going to have to make a custom cable. I've already redesigned this particular board revision 2. I haven't sent them off to be manufactured yet because I want to actually try this version first and make sure it's working okay. This also has one other problem that I found after I sent it for fabbing and that is that this pin here for the USB, the very first pin, which is ground, is not actually connected to anywhere. Uh, interestingly, there was no DRC error thrown for this, but these other pads are grounded 
and they're all connected to the USB header. So I believe this is still going to be okay. If not, I'll just have to do a bodge wire between them. So that's the SAMD21 Mangler. That's with the 3D print on there. It does come off quite easily. As I said, I can just pull it off. I'm going to try to do it gently so I don't make the chip go flying anywhere. I'll do it upside down. The chip just came out anyway. It pops out fine. And if the chip does get stuck, I'm push them through like that. If the chip does get stuck inside here, I've left room on top that you can just push the chip through. So there you go. A little bit fiddly. Um, it's quite deceiving how small everything is. It's a tiny little chip. It's a tiny little holder. But it works. So there it is. The SAMD21 Mangler PCB. A little 3D printed holder. You see a SAMD21G inside there. I'm going to put this together on my stream on Wednesday. So that's Wednesday 7am GMT plus 10, which is pretty much Tuesday night for everyone else in the world. Come and join me as I put it all together and see if it works. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for all my new subscribers over the last few weeks. Welcome. And until next time, catch you later.